Well, hey guys and girls, Lucas and I have gone through the ship forward and aft, and we are here for the last episode of USS Little Rock's archaeological trek. And uh, we also can't thank Ryan enough, who's been behind the camera for some of these episodes, so thank you, Ryan. And for this last video, we're in a pretty amazing space. I was just standing in the elevator shaft, and this space is where they would have kept the conventional and nuclear warheads to go up to the missile house. So the elevator would come down and it has a cart on it. If you take a look, you've got the two line, the two rails right here and here, mimicking what's in the missile house, but upside down now. Now you are connecting uh, from above where the transfer rails in the missile house are connecting. Uh, the object is on top. Here the object would be below. And the cart is coming. You'll also see other transfer rails and uh, lines, all right, that would bring the guys two at a time, would bring it, put it right onto the elevator, and then it would uh, go to the shaft and then up to the missile house. So again, can't thank you enough. We've got Lucas here and Lucas is gonna uh, talk about the architecture of this space in 45 to 49. So originally this space was turret 64, ammunition handling room, and three of the turrets, six inch powder magazines. Now a lot of that has been destroyed to make this space open, but there is still some evidence that we can see. First and foremost, we have this door that leads to the forward six inch powder magazine. And again, you can just barely make out the circle for the little bell. And we have it mirrored over there on the other side of the elevator. And just like turret 63, if we look up, we can see about a half circle of the remains of the armored trunk. So that is where the actual ammunition hoists were. So where you and I are roughly standing is where, again, like you saw in turret 61, where the conveyor belts would be leading up to turret 64. Yes, that should be right around here. And one of the more interesting space, or one of the more interesting features that make this space unique is that as we're getting closer to the stern, the ship is gradually getting narrower and narrower. So, to get down here, they had to realign the hatch. So if we come over here, in this part of the ceiling, you can see the remains of the original hatch. So what you'll see here, it's about a half of a rectangle, and it goes into this I-beam, and then continues out on the other side. And it's diagonal to the bulkhead that's here. And again, that's because the original bulkhead would have been diagonal to follow the hull, the shape of the hull. So what you're saying is, Lucas, right here, you see that thick, oh, it actually it starts here, goes through here, there, goes through this I-beam, comes out on the other side. Yes. And it carries on. Now, do you, can you talk about the archaeological principle uh, that you, when you stack things, one's earlier in time than another, is there? Because you were mentioning that it was, it must have been here before the I beam. Yeah, so it's called stratigraphy, right? And usually in the ground, it's the lower you go, the older it gets. Okay. But here, since we're looking at the overhead, the higher it is, the older it gets. So this doorway had to be here first to place the I beam under it. Yeah. That's a really interesting principle, I like that. In addition to the archaeology that Lucas was just mentioning, uh, there's a couple other things that we'd like to show before we do our wrap-up. This little space was the missile detonator compartment. So you can 
imagine the detonators on these shelves here. Interestingly, though, on some of the on the plans that we were looking at, this was actually more forward near the corner. But maybe there was a, they put an extra rail uh, for the elevator there, and it was moved here. Uh, but in the blueprints, it's kind of in the forward starboard corner. Also, if we come back here, all right, we have the storage for the emergency destruct materials, which from our thinking is equipment that would have been able to disassemble the conventional and nuclear warheads that were down here if uh, you know the ship was sinking or you know, in an odd sort of way, it would get captured, which wouldn't happen, of course. But, you know, to, like you would with classified materials, you're burning or, uh, you know, you're burning or burying or flooding with water or, you know, other liquids to destroy it, that this little space here would have had equipment for that. Well, I'd like to bring in Lucas now. Uh, <laughs> this has been a really great partnership. Um, through the six episodes, and we hope that you enjoyed uh, the this little look at uh, you know an archaeological study of the USS Little Rock. What would you like to add, Lucas? Anything? Well, I hope we can do it again sometime. That's a great thought. We hope we can do it again, and you know, um, it was to explore and document and index, and we think we've done that pretty well. So, Lucas, thanks so much. This was a great, a great experience. I felt like I learned a ton, and even though this is a ship I'm on every day, you probably feel like you learned a ton, right? Okay. And again, thank you to Ryan behind the camera. And you know, thanks for all your support. You know, become a subscriber, like, uh, become a member, $4.99 a month. And we'll continue to bring you great content here at the Buffalo Naval Park. And for everyone, we'll see you again soon.